made in nothing but committed serious relationships. The last thing I wanted to happen when I finally became single was to call someone my girlfriend or even care about how they were feeling. I didn't want to invest emotionally into any one person. I didn't even try to make any new friends. I had five, and that was enough. I was in my late 20s, and I thought the world was my oyster. To help with responsibility or meaningful conversations about what I could be working on to help the relationship, I wanted drunken debauchery with the side of late-night donuts and Mexican food. At the same time I was exploring being single, my actual job was hosting a trivia night and an open mic night at a small bar called the Blarney Stone Pub in Claremont. I went to this bar almost every night whether I was working or not. It was a dark and dingy fortress full of people who wanted to be alone, but also wanted to sing songs and play darts. No one in this bar was ever truly happy. But it was the only place we could go where we didn't feel judged for hating ourselves. In this weird reality between bonds and Mr. Fish and Chips is where I became the mayor. Because I grew up in the neighborhood and came to the bar every night, I was dubbed by several regulars the mayor of Claremont. It was an honorary title bestowed on only the luckiest of drunks. Instead of taking it like the insult it probably was meant as, I went out and bought a thrift store tuxedo, a top hat, and a monocle, and some Blarney Stone regulars made me a mayoral sash. <laughs> this was my I'm getting laid outfit. <laughs> and it almost never worked. <laughs> I say almost because one night around midnight, a girl showed up to the bar that would change the trajectory of my life forever. This girl walked over and asked if I wanted to play darts. She was fairly tall, had dirty blonde hair, and looked like a girl who Zach Morris dated and wasn't Kelly Kapowski. I agreed to play darts because A, I was already playing darts, and B, she was either very attractive or I had my monocle on the wrong eye. Either way, we played darts, and I won twice. She said, best of five, and I said, no. I was honestly losing all interest in playing someone who's that bad at darts. She said, if the mayor wins, the mayor gets whatever he wants. So I won. <laughs> Again. She pulled me outside and started to make out with me. I say make out with me because I definitely had no say in it, nor did I make any moves. The whole time. She was forceful, and she wow. seemed angry, and it was hot. I didn't move at all. She moved me. My hands, my face, my neck, my top hat. <laughs> we never removed a stitch of clothing. It was like being back in junior high, but this time I knew what things were. <laughs> she positioned me into some form that seemed to give her the most satisfaction, as witness to the noises she was making, at a volume matched only by 1980s teenagers playing Run DMC out of a boombox while walking through basketball courts challenging others to fights. <laughs> when she was done, she pushed me away and walked back into the bar. I walked back in a minute later to see her sitting at a table with friends who had all waited patiently for whatever it was that had just happened to be over. They paid their tab and left. This was my first interaction with a woman my friends and I would soon nickname No Limits. She was nice to talk to. She was mildly funny. She was hornier than anyone I've ever met, and she made me legitimately scared, which I found fascinating. But not in a, hey, I should buy her dinner way. More like in a, hey, I'm going to go out with this girl who I'm somehow attracted to, but can you leave your cell phone on just in case? <laughs> a couple of days later, while on stage at the party, I noticed No Limits walk in with a friend and sit at the bar. She waved at me, and I smiled. I hopped off stage and walked over and asked if she wanted to play darts. You see, I thought this was like a wink wink moment. Like, I was going to be cute and clever. Like, hey, let's go play darts again. I beat you, then you abuse me, but like in a sex way. <laughs> she said she didn't feel like playing tonight, and she just wanted to hang out with her friends. Feeling like I had perhaps misunderstood the nature of our relationship, I was confused, but also drunk. And I walked off to put a dollar in the jukebox and play at least four songs from Third Eye Blind's first record. <laughs> While standing at the juke deciding between how's it going to be and semi-charmed life, No Limits walked up, No Limits friend walked up and said, Hey, I just want to let you know she came the other night to see you. Like, she's not just some random, she literally has a thing for you and is into you. Her friend then walked back to the bar, and I felt reinvigorated. How's it going to be? <laughs> As the night was ending, No Limits told me her friend was leaving early and asked if I could give her a ride home. Being a gentleman, I agreed. As soon as we sat down in my Ford Ranger, she again started making out with me. I tried to say something. I tried to maybe find out where she lived. 
but then she grabbed my penis. <laughs> not in a nice way, not in a let's continue the evening way, but in like a shut the fuck up way. I was shocked and in pain and not at all excited to be in this situation. You see, I was raised Irish Catholic. Meaning I was always taught to hate myself and look at my sexual activity as a duty, not an adventure. <laughs> Although I had plenty of healthy relationships, weird sex stuff wasn't my thing. Mainly because it had never been an option. And I had just always assumed that that was fine with me. However, at this moment, a woman sat across from me, squeezing my peen and licking my ear. She told me she wanted to spend the night at my place, and I said, absolutely not. <laughs> Mainly because I had no desire to see whatever this was in the morning. So she offered up her place, and I agreed knowing that I'd leave in the middle of the night. I had to go buy condoms. So I went to the CVS up the street, grabbed some, and got in line behind an older woman and what I presumed was her teenage daughter. The mother turned back to me and asked if I was really the mayor. I forgot I was still in my mayor's house. It was 2 a.m. I was in a CVS holding condoms, and this lady thought I was the actual mayor. So of course I said, Yes, I am. <laughs> she then legitimately was starstruck, handed her phone to the cashier, and asked if she could take a photo of all of us. I held up the condoms in triumph, the cashier laughed, and I was on my way to make a huge mistake. <laughs> when we got to know them in town, she told me to wait in the living room while she picked up her room. No big deal. Then I heard a voice call me to the bedroom, and I walked over. She was peeking around the door, and then opened it all the way. I was done with that. She was dressed in a Catholic schoolgirl's outfit, hair and pigtails, backpack on. I stared at her in disbelief, because this has never been my fantasy. Ever. I realize this is a turn-on for some folks, but not for those of us who actually went to Catholic school. <laughs> Plant screws and jumpers only bring back memories of abusive nuns and friends smoking cigarettes in their tercels. <laughs> Did I drunkenly tell her I went to Catholic school? Was she messing with me? Did she go to Catholic school? Where was I right now? My, my libido went from 60 to zero in about zero seconds. I tried to rally, and my first move was to get her naked as soon as possible, but she kept wanting to role play. I was the teacher, and she was the bad student that needed to be punished. I don't know what that means. I mean, it didn't even fit a theme. I'm wearing a tux. At least she could have been like a naughty debutante or something. Lady Mary in Downton Abbey. I think that's like the box. She asked me to take control of her, and I tried, but at this point it was just too late. I was so thrown off, all I could think about was when I could leave. She noticed that I wasn't into it and sat on the end of the bed looking completely embarrassed. I felt bad. I felt guilty and responsible, and holy shit, this whole Catholic role play thing was working. <laughs> Four people got that, that's great. <laughs> She somehow made me feel guilty for not wanting to spank her, and that's some next-level clergy shit. <laughs> we sat there for a minute, and I didn't know what to say, so I said nothing. After a few more minutes of silence, no limits told me I could go if I wanted, and, said that that, and I said that would be best, and I'll call her tomorrow, and we can hang out. She agreed, and two nights later, we were at the movies watching John Cusack save the world while she reached into my pants and told me to shut up. We went back to her place, and she laid out on the bed and said, the mayor can do whatever he wants. Learning from the Catholic schoolgirl mistake, she had cleaned the palette, and a new picture could be painted. Now, I don't want to be graphic yet, so I won't. <laughs> Let's just say that years of what-ifs were realized and decades of is this legal were confirmed. Anything went. It was her thing. We did weird positions, odd locations, dares, double dares, food. She dressed up as a doctor, a lawyer, Batman. Which only confused me because I took issue with her desire to look more like Val Kilmer's Batman than Adam West's. <laughs> it was up to me. I got to make all of the decisions. I mean, of course, the Batman thing was my idea. After a while, I had run out of ideas, and as I got more lazy with scenarios, she decided it was time for her to come up with an idea. Since I was pretty sure I was already going to hell, I said, What do you got? That's when she suggested a finger in the butt. <laughs> her finger, my butt. Just one to start. I could pick the one. <laughs> I stared at her, and then stared some more, and more, and then said, I'll have to think about it? That might be too far. Now go put on the cape of the utility belt. <laughs> I was stumped. She had given me a sexual revolution with no strings attached or emotional baggage. She taught me things I'd never divulged for fear of imprisonment, and now she was making one small request. Could I really deny her this? Also, this wasn't an unreasonable request. I mean, a finger in the butt? Sure, I thought about it. It felt good, I imagine, but 
I wasn't going to try it myself on my own. I mean, there's no way that at the exact moment I put my own finger in my own butt, I wouldn't immediately have some heart attack and die in that position, leaving a roommate with a lasting image they'd share on Facebook. <laughs> but I thought about it, and so is everyone. <laughs> Since I had no intention of being in a relationship or being invested with no limits, and based on the fact that all of our interactions happen late at night with alcohol involved, I assumed that feelings weren't going to be discussed anytime soon. So because of these parameters, I often felt fine discussing our escapades with my friends. This time, though, I needed advice. Out of my five friends, three said to try it because who cares? And the other two said no because it was gross. And both sides had totally valid points. <laughs> it is a butt. It is a and it is a finger. Several questions piled up. Would she get cute and try to double up? Would she use lotion? Where would the finger go afterwards or before? And then how long would it stay there? Should I write out a list of rules and guidelines to go over with her? How will this turn her on? To a lot of people, I imagine, a little butt stuff, as my uncle likes to call it, is no big deal. And in some cases, it's expected. Although, I spent the last couple of months really testing the sexual limits. This one scenario left me worried. What if I liked it? What if it became my thing? What if stuff in my butt was the greatest thing? And after it happened, I would require it for all future relationships. I mean, that's a tough one to put in the wedding bags. Yeah. On top of that, if I said no, what if I was missing out on the one thing? What if I never knew how great it could be? After a solid three days of discussion and debate, I made a decision. She could do it. But if I didn't like it, she'd have to immediately stop. No tricks. She agreed. After a completely ridiculous night of darts and drinking, we went back to my house. I wanted to be in a safe space. <laughs> Things got going, and wham, no pun intended, she put her finger in my butt. No warning, no buildup, just complete and utter surprise, as for the first time my body had to process something going in rather than coming out. <laughs> when I was a little boy, <laughs> I had dreams. Many, many dreams. I wanted to be president. I wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. I wanted to be a famous writer. I held on to those dreams for years. But as I got older, all those dreams started to slowly die as the rest of the world quickly blows past you with the fury of a cyclone. Nothing will ever be the same once you see what being an adult really is. Nothing will ever be the same when your parents truly leave you to live. Nothing will ever be the same when in a cold sweat, you lock eyes with a Kelly Kapowski knockoff who has her index cover halfway in you. I can't say that I liked it. I can't say that I hate it. I can't even say I remember what it felt like. All I can say is that it happened once for 15 minutes. 